in the driveway, hey, in the driveway, where we at, in the driveway, for an encouraging word to remind them more that, <laughs> oops, <laughs> yes, Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, good morning, ladies. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Miss Raquel. How are you, sis? Good morning, good morning. We are waiting just a minute. If you would, please um, share this on your timeline. Good morning, Mother Taylor. Good morning, Lady Ebony. Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? Good morning. We'll wait just another minute, if you would. I'm having a little technical difficulties. Y'all know how that goes. Amen. But we came to hear the word. <laughs> Amen. Good morning. We're going to do this uh, as quickly as God allows and go on about our beautiful day. I don't know how your weather is, but it's really beautiful. It's not quite hot yet. So, amen and praise the Lord. Good morning. I love you. I love you. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, I was like, okay, God, you know, I don't worry about this no more, but it comes up in my mind and I'm like, God, what do you want to say? And it's amazing how it's usually something wrapped around an experience or something. And the only thing that he gave me was be still and know. We know the word says be still and know that I am thy. Good morning. Good morning, Lady Quarter, Evangelist Quarter. Fred, good morning. Uh, be still and know that I am God is the word. That's the word. Be still and know that I am God. But there's some more things that he wants you to be still and know. Amen. So this morning, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're going to say. God, we thank you that it's freshly from your mouth, oh God, from your heart to the people of God's ears. Lord, even myself, I thank you, Lord, for having our ears clear, God, so that we can hear your word and our hearts, God, purified so that we can receive your word and our hands, God, lifted and ready to apply your word to our lives. We just give you glory and honor for what you're going to say and what you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, it's it's going to be hot here. It's going to be 98, amen. But uh, be still and know, as I said, the word says, be still and know that I'm God. You know, when you come from a place of brokenness, when you come from a place of um, not knowing who you are, when you come from a place of just uh, not believing in yourself and that God could ever, you know, utilize you for the glory or to help somebody else. And you you come into a place where we and I'm talking this morning. I want somebody to listen. We 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 come to a place of busyness. Now, how many know? I can do, I'm doing this, I'm doing this for my ministry, I'm doing this for my business, I'm doing this for my children, I'm doing this for, the, you know, whatever the women, and I'm doing this and this, and we get busy. We come from not knowing who we are, not knowing what we possess, not knowing the power, not knowing the ability that we have through our scars, through our pain, through our brokenness, through our bad decisions, that that's the power that we get when we come on the other side and know that good morning Miss Carrie and know who we are but we can find ourselves getting very very busy and we have to be careful because that's the way of the world now and it's spilled over into the church we have to be so busy always doing something okay and if you're busy doing something when are you really spending time with God and I'm not talking about a ritual I'm talking about being still and knowing there is no way you can know what your next assignment is there is no way you can know the trap that the enemy is going to set there's no way that you can know oh I, even though this is a good idea and it may even be a god idea this is not what i'm supposed to be doing right now in this season if you don't be still you won't know you have to good morning Nakisha. good morning you have to spend time with the lord being still and i'm gonna y'all know me i'm gonna be transparent i did not know 
that I could not be still and be quiet and not think about something or focus on something. And then, but there's a process I want to share with you this morning. I came from not being able to be still, and then I would have to have some music on, some, you know, worship music and, and, the, and the, the prophetic, you know how we do the prophetic prayer music, and that is good, but that ain't being still and knowing. We have to get in a place where the there is absolute quietness. There is absolute stillness. And we can know things that we never ever known. We can see things that we've never ever seen. We can feel the connection to God in a way that we've never ever done. But it takes some discipline and we're forever changing. Don't forget. We're forever changing. But in this season, because see, we keep talking about seasons, but as you go from season to season, you go from glory to glory. It's just like going from grade to grade. So you're getting into a place where what you did before and how easy it came before is not going to come that easy in this season you're gonna have to be still so that you can know be still so that you can know the assignment be still so that you can know the true peace of God peace and a bunch of business they clash and we have to be in a place that we putting on the whole armor of God the whole armor of God. You know, we, we do the, the victory, the dancing, the shouting, and that's amazing. But if you, woman of God, are going to be, and even man of God, are going to be that giant in this next season that can weather it and pass it the first time. See, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about spiritual maturity, growth, forever changing. But you got to be still and know before that thing can happen, before it can fully manifest. You have to be still and know because when you're, it's just like sleeping. It's just like sleeping. If you lay down and you, you know, allow your body to totally rest, totally be at a state of rest, you can get restored for the next day. You can get restoration. You can be revived. Everything happens when you, when you may not be still as in your body may move or you may turn, but you're not at the table working. You're not cooking. You're not driving in the car. You're at a state of rest. So we need to get that mind at a state of rest. And that is absolute quietness. And it's so funny how we think we got it. You know, we, we got this. And you realize how many times you got to bring your mind back in. Bring your mind back in. We ain't talking about did you iron the clothes. We talking about Jesus and being still and knowing what he has for us. Because I found out you missed so many beautiful nuggets. So many beautiful, subtle messages from God when you're not still. He'll walk with you and he'll talk with you. But God is such a gentleman. He don't yell. Somebody need to know this. Those things that come up like kind of like anxiety or, or panic or you better do this or you're going to do go to hell and you better do this right just like this and for this amount of time. That is not God. Somebody needs to know that. We have to be so reprogrammed in our mind about his gentleness and his mercy and his grace and his love, unconditional love. Remember, we talked about that last time. But in order to know what you're going to have to do, instead of going around the tree, going around the bush, going around again, I'm at a place where, Lord, I don't want to go through that again. So help me focus. I had an issue where something spilled in the house and I normally would have just, cause it was an absolute mess. And I tell you, when I tell you, Ramonda would have came unglued. No, let me take that back. Mona would have came absolutely unglued and went into, oh my God, how am I going to clean this? How am I going to do this? And you know, I had to take a minute and be still. Hear me when I say this mama, cause that child is trying your patience. That child is acting like, I know this for somebody, Acting like they never heard the name of Jesus. That child is acting like you never taught them the word and you never taught them the way. But be still and know that God has him or her. Good God Almighty, I felt that all through my body. I don't care what behavior. I'm not going to the left. Somebody needs this. Somebody, I'm throwing a lifeline to some mama this morning on here. I know it in my Noah. 
I don't care what behaviors he or she displays. You continue to speak the word over their life and over their mind, over their atmosphere. Ask the Holy Spirit to absolutely arrest them in the name of Jesus. Be still and know, mama. Be still and know that you raised them right. Even when you didn't do what you thought you should have done. God covered him, her. God covered you. Be still and know. Busyness. Busyness handicaps us. Busyness keeps us from knowing the divine will of God for our lives. Be still and know, wife. I don't care how that husband acting. I don't care what he's saying. You be still and know that God has it. God has it. And I found this to be true. Well, my entire family, honey, they running like a well oiled machine. But it took me backing down, even though I was right. It took me being quiet, being still and working on my behavior and my responses versus my reaction. Now catch that somebody. I'm going to repeat it. You know how I do. Your response. Are you responding with the word? I'm going to go ahead and throw that up there. Are you responding with the word? I'm going to take it a little further. Or are you reacting in your flesh? That right there. Are you responding with the word? Are you reacting in your flesh? Be still and know that God has everything. And it seems like uh, uh, when you get off kilter a little bit and, and you begin to get so busy and, and doing what you do. See, that's the thing. We can't continue doing what we do. God, how do you want me to do this? I never stop to think about it. Because sometimes we can go to God for such big things and trust him for such big things. But what about the little things? God, what do you want? And I'm telling you, in order to retrain your mind, which helps to retrain your spirit, you got to go like a little child. The words talks about being like a little child. But I found out if you go to God like a little child goes to their father, you will find out he wants to be a part of more than what we've allowed him to be. That ought to bless somebody right there. Be still and know that God has a plan, woman of God. Be still and know that as much as you want for that ministry, as much as you want for that family, as much as you want, he has even more for you. But you're going to have to be still and know. And first of all, we have to be still and get to know him on another level. Because there are just levels and levels and levels of his goodness and his grace and his mercy and his favor. Be still and know that his favor is going before you. Be still and know that his grace and mercy follows you. Be still and know that he has angels that are around you and the Holy Spirit is in you and around you. What do you have to worry about, mama? What do you have to worry about, wife? What do you have to worry about, businesswoman, husband, businessman? Be still and know that you are absolutely covered. You are covered. The enemy wants us to believe that we're not covered in this area or we're not or or because it happened last time. That's a trick of the enemy. And you have to snatch the thought down to roll it back into the pits of hell and speak the word of it and go on about your day. Be still and know that everything you need, he's already provided. Be still and know. Be still and know that he knows the bill needs to be paid. He knows you need gas in the car. He knows you need food. But instead of allowing that anxiety to come up, come on, woman of God. Come on, let his joy be your strength. I have to tell myself that. I've always said the joy of the Lord is my strength. But when you can look in the mirror, and y'all know I ain't going to go not one week without talking about the mirror. When you can get in that mirror and talk to yourself, you are unstoppable. I have to get in the mirror. Ramonda, I don't care what the circumstances are. Yes, these bills or whatever it is that wants to grab my attention and make me forget to be still and to know. See, that's another thing right there. You can be still, but you're going to have to know. So I get in the mirror and I said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Would you tell your child that's in a race now, they're an Olympian and they're in a race and you want them to understand that the joy of the Lord is their strength or another woman of God you're encouraging, you're going to tell them to be still and know uh, that, that he is God. You're going to tell them the joy of the Lord. No, you're going to look that child in the eye or that woman of God in the eye and say the joy of the Lord is your strength. And that's what you have to tell yourself. 
And when you say that enough times after a while, oh, oh, okay, I feel my strength. I feel my strength. The joy of the Lord, woman of God. The joy of the Lord, mama. The joy of the Lord is your strength. But you got to be still so that you can know it. Amen. Amen. God is speaking. And we've had the jumping and the shouting. Yes. But now if we don't work on our character and our behaviors, habits, routines, we're not going to be able to be in the overflow. And it's a good thing to have the nuggets of the Lord and the blessings of the Lord. But he wants us to step into the overflow. But you got to be still and know. Be still and know that it's already worked out. And all you have to do is listen to him. Listen in your heart and know. And as you be still and know, you'll know that that's the voice of the Lord. And you'll begin to pick it out quickly. Oh, that ain't the voice of the Lord. That is the voice of the Lord. You know why? Because in your quiet time, be still and know. Be still and know. Be still and know. That God has it. Be still and know it's already worked out. Be still and know you got the victory. Be still and know that you win. Be still and know good morning, Essence. And I'm excited about what God is doing in every life that is really trying to be in his divine will in this season. He's just showing himself mighty. But it's not going to be always in the corporate setting. It's not going to be. It's going to be what are you doing behind the scenes? What are you doing in your quiet time? And you got to have quiet time. You got to quiet your mind to have quiet time. Come on now. Quiet those thoughts to have a uh, quiet time. And that is what we are working on in this season, being able to quiet our mind, quiet our thoughts, realize that that's not important right now. I don't need to deal with that right now. Tell them children to sit down somewhere, <laughs> sit down somewhere because I can be the mother that God created me to be after I'm still and I know. After I, before they even get up in the morning, I already got on my armor. Uh huh. I had to go back to like a little child and, and, and pull that thing out and literally, and the breastplate of righteousness. I had to do that stuff. You know, I have to go deep because I know, I know me. I know me. I know me. When you live in a negative space for so long, that thing just wants to come back up and come back up and come back up. But baby, you just squish it down, and cast it down and throw it down and, and speak the word over that situation. And you will begin to see a change. But most of all, when you get that extra bit of peace, when you get the overflow of peace, when you get that overflow of peace that no, honey, not anything hasn't changed yet. But my mind has changed. My heart has changed because I was still and now I know. Somebody caught that. I was still and now I know. God is speaking. Father, we thank you right now for your women of God and men of God. I'm sorry. Being still and knowing who they are in you. Being still and know that you already have it worked out, Lord. Being still and knowing that you have their children, you have their job, you have their future. But if they can wake up every day and be still. Wake up every day and talk to that woman in the mirror. Encourage her before you encourage anywhere else, anyone else. I've often talked about this as women as women of God and as African-American or black women, whichever you call yourself. Three times we have been taught three different ways to take care of everybody else first. And that's why we're running on empty. That's why many of us are frustrated. That's why many of us don't know. People don't know that behind the scenes we're hopeless and helpless. And, and we're talking about God and, 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 and doing these things. But in the back of our mind, we're tired. We're worn. If you wake up in the morning and you spend time with God and then you turn around and spend time with you, encouraging you, empowering you, speaking life to you, you are unstoppable. And I love that word. I love that word. I know what that word means now. I've heard it all my life. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. But when you can spend time with the Father and get yourself quiet and get yourself in a place to hear and receive, you are are unstoppable and talk to that woman in the mirror unstoppable you are unstoppable i don't care and i'm telling you a little secret i've learned i've shared with, with one of the ladies on here when you can forgive yourself 
empower yourself and love on yourself, you are unstoppable. Tell yourself, I don't care, and I'm, I don't know, the Lord just dropped this in my, if you had an abortion, if uh, uh, you had whatever addiction, if you had whatever it is, you let your family down, you put your family in harm's way because you didn't do what you needed to do. You know the things that we think about, but we don't say, forgive yourself. Wake up in the morning and say, I forgive you for whatever. And when you do that, and then you let yourself know, but I'm going to be here for you. I know I'm never going to give up on you. See, you got to talk to the woman in the mirror because you talk to her when you're mad. You can call yourself ugly and fat just like everybody else. Call yourself dumb and stupid and, and don't nobody love you. But when you can begin to reverse that thing and begin to speak life to the woman in the mirror, you are unstoppable. And the light of Jesus will shine in your, in your, in your, in your heart in your mind, and in your body. It will show up physically what you do with God privately. I am a witness. We often kid. I saw somebody posted on there about Bishop Jakes when he started it versus how he looks now. And, you know, they, we always want to relate it to money. I was guilty. I was guilty. Yeah, money. No, it ain't money. It ain't, it ain't always money. Because money can change you from the outside. But the glow of the Holy Ghost and the glow of the Holy Spirit and that peace that surpasses all understanding, that makes you beautiful. You don't need the makeup. You don't need the lashes. You don't need none of that. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you don't need it. Because the, the, the peace of the Lord, the Holy Ghost abiding on the inside of you, that makes you beautiful. You looking in the mirror and talking to the person that you did wrong. See, people don't know. We always, sometimes we're thinking about what we did to others, but we've treated ourselves, women, worse sometimes than we've treated other people. So if you can take a minute, I got to drill that this morning. Take a minute and look into your own own eyes. Single woman, you, you on here and you single and you want to be married. You want a husband, a God husband? Give me some hearts right now. You got to speak to you because if you get him now, everything that you haven't let go of, everything that you don't believe you are will ruin the relationship. You're going to do the same thing you did in the last relationship. And hello, newsflash, it ain't always him. Let me tell you something I did. I did subconsciously. I have not even tried. I don't want a relationship because I know how jacked up my last ones were. And I'm not going to make Mr. Right pay for what Mr. Wrong did. Come on now. And I don't mean perfect. I mean the one God has for me. Mr. Right. The one that he has. The one that I compliment him and I lift him. My king. And he treats me like a queen. You can't accept being treated like no queen if you don't even love yourself. Come on, somebody. You can't. You can't do it. You cannot. So God, until I'm ready, don't even let it be in my mind. I push it out of my mind. It's not that I don't want it. I don't want it if I'm not ready because it's not going to work. Or And if you don't be still and know, you better catch this. It just came fresh news flash. If you don't be still and know, you ain't going to ain't gonna, you ain't gonna know the right one anyway. If you don't be still and know what a man is, what a man of God is, if you don't know who he is, how can you identify with him? You're going to end up with another slick rig. You're going to end up with another man who's living something on Sunday. And baby, take off that mask. They talking about the women taking off the mask. Baby, these men got some masks on too. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. I'm just saying, ladies, let's keep it real. Let's hold ourselves accountable for always getting in the same situation. If you're doing the same cycle over and over, you got to step back. But you got to be healed, delivered, and set free. Doesn't mean you're not a powerful woman of God. Doesn't mean you're not anointed. Don't mean you're not appointed. But it just means that you don't quite know what you possess. You don't quite know what you deserve. Be still and no. Good morning, Miss Hattie. God bless you. Hello, Melissa. Good morning. Be still and know. Good morning, Miss Francis. I love you so much. Be still and know. Some of you hear me when I say with everything that is in me, in my prophetic voice, some of you on here, you can't even imagine what God wants to do with your story, with your testimony. But you're going to have to love you on another level. And I mean this with love and respect. You're going to have to love you on another level. You're going to have to think that you deserve what God is going to do. And not in yourself, but because he's in you. Because he's your father. What do we do for our kids that they don't really deserve it? But they deserve it because they are our kids. Can somebody check me right there? 
They deserve it because they're our kids. You are my child. You shouldn't be doing X, Y, and Z. You are my child. You come from a godly lineage. Okay, same thing for you, woman of God. You deserve a man that will treat you like a queen. But how can you uh, be treated like something you don't even know what it is? Learn in this time of waiting, single woman, what the queen is inside of you. What do you deserve? You don't deserve to be talked to like you're a child. You don't to be. You don't deserve to be yelled at. You don't deserve to be slapped. You don't deserve it. And the Lord has showed me time and time again this domestic violence that's going on in the church from the leaders on down. And don't nobody want to talk about it. That's fine. But we gonna have to get some help. And it comes from you looking in that mirror and deciding I'm worth more than this. I have value and I have worth. I am a queen. My father is the king of kings and the lord of lords. And I don't deserve anything less than to be treated like a queen. I love you all. God bless you. I'm just excited. I say that every week and I'm like really reminded. You just keep saying you excited because I am excited. I don't know if you know what it feels like to hate you worse than you could ever hate anyone else. To hate yourself. Self-hate. I lived in it 30, 40 years. And to know that I'm worthy of love and that I can truly love me. Yeah, he is a liar. That's all right. You can do the replay if it's going in and out. He is a liar. He is a liar. Right now in the name of Jesus, she will hear everything that you mean for her to hear it, God. In Jesus' name, amen. But I'm just excited about it because... The things, it's not about the showboating. Showboating has taken us the last 10 years. Now, if you've been in, in, in the Lord for a while, you know this showboating spirit has taken us about the last 10 years. I mean, it's just showboat, showboat, showboat. You know, make it look like you got this. and Make it look like you have it all together. Make, the devil's a lie. We're dying slowly from the inside out because we're trying to pretend. We're trying to live a life that God didn't even mean for us to live. If they did it that way, don't mean God wants you to do it that way. You got to be still and know your assignment. You got to be still and know how he wants you to do it. See, it's one thing. And as we grow, we learn these levels and these, these details. It's one thing to know what God wants you to do. But how about knowing how God wants you to do it? And I'm not saying it's not going to be hard or difficult or challenging, but you automatically self your, set yourself up for things to be harder than they need to be if you don't do God's will, God's way. Before we get off of here, if you want prayer, just let me know um, and we'll go right on in. If not, we will uh, wrap this thing up and just go about our day remembering that we deserve it. We can be still so that we can know God has it. He's already taken care of it. He's already made the way, but you have to be still. I have to be still and know what it is that he wants us to do and how to do it. And then when things don't work like we wanted them to, this is the biggest change that I've seen in my life other than my relationship with my kids. The biggest change is when things don't work like I wanted them to, I have to stop and say, you know what? God, okay then, what you want me to do? Which way you gonna want this thing to go? And my kids are still like, Mama, are you serious? Mama, you for real? One of my kids, I got a call from the teacher that was, you know, chatter, chatter, chatter box. Walked in the door looking like, uh uh. I just sat there. How you doing? That's another thing. Don't beat people up when they walk in the door. I don't know why God had me to go here. If you want relationships to change, how are you presenting a situation? Even the hardest situation, even the discipline, even when you have to tell somebody what hurts you, even when you have to tell somebody what makes you uncomfortable, there's still a way to do it. I don't know who needed that because it seemed like it came out of the left, but somebody needs to know that. When my, when my child walked in the door and I spoke to them and I sat there and sometimes I have to tell my children, and you know, we don't know this for real. This is so uncommon. I don't even know how to deal with this yet. Give me a minute. Go ahead. You can go do what you got to do. I love you. God bless you. But until God show me how to do, I'm not going to do the yelling thing. I'm not going to do the, all that stuff because we mess them up. And then we think we make them think that's normal. And guess what? I don't want my grandkids to be yelled at like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you this morning, whatever it is that you need to change. That's how I'm bringing it back on in. Be still and know. Be still so that God can show you how to handle every situation. Be still and know that God has a plan. Even the smallest thing. God, how do you want me to handle it? 
And when I see my children go, Mom, man, I just can't believe it. I, 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 just, I just can't believe it. You handling this stuff like this. I just, I'm just saying like, who God is real. And for me, I don't, I don't need anybody's confirmation, but because these are my kids, when they say things like that, because you know, kids, ain't, they're, they're, they're going to be honest. And my kids sure enough going to be honest, more honest than I ever asked. So be still and know. We're going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. Lord, we magnify your holy name on today. God, we reverence your absolute holiness. God, we thank you for the breath that we're breathing on today. Lord, we're going to take time to just acknowledge the trees and the leaves and the grass, Lord God, and everything you do. Sometimes, you know, God, you prompt me to go through the house. God, I thank you that the lights come on. God, I thank you that the water come on. God, when we just want to be in a spirit of thankfulness and gratefulness in the name of Jesus. Lord, your daughters, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift Raquel to you this morning. God, we lift her to you, Lord. The mighty woman of God, the warrior, Lord God, the one who was not afraid to stand in the gap. God, we thank you that you're going to utilize everything for the glory of God, that she will begin to snatch women out of uh, this uh, bondage, Lord God, and, and, and the system and the cycle and addiction. God, we speak over her life right now, God, that you will connect her only to those that mean her well, only to those that are supposed to be in her life in this season and give her the strength, God, to separate so that she can be still and know what your assignment is, God. Sometimes when we come over to this side and we're all excited and full of energy, people want to drain us dry. People want to drain your daughter dry. But God, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree that she will see who to, to tell them no and not feel bad about saying no. No, don't let them drain you dry, sis. Don't let them drain you dry in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. We lift Mother Taylor to you this morning. We lift her to you, Lord God. We speak wholeness in her body. We refuse to believe anything else, Lord. We thank you for the confidence you're giving her to speak in front of others, God. We thank you how even when she sleep at night, God, you're preparing her for her ministry. God, you're preparing her, Lord God, to be that mother in Zion, Lord. And sometimes she may think that people don't want to hear what she has to say, but oh, there are women. There are women that need her. There are women that need her wisdom, God. There are women that need her holiness. There are women that need her righteousness in the name of Jesus. And we say thank you for it in Jesus' name. God, we lift Miss Hattie to you today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the beautiful vessel. God, we thank you for her humble spirit. We thank you I don't even have to know her to know that. We thank you for the humble spirit, God. We thank you that you are taking her from glory to glory, God. And that she too will be a woman of wisdom, Lord God, to impart wisdom in other young girls and young ladies, Lord God, that she has so much to offer them from her life experiences that she will be bold, God, and that she will step up and do that and know that you are with her, Lord God. And I don't even remember if you asked, but my sister Frances, in the name of Jesus, we're lifting her. We're lifting her. The enemy always wanted uh, us not to connect, but God, we're connecting in the spirit. We're connected. We're sisters forever. I don't, it may be a little while, but I'll let her know, God, we're sisters. Lord, I thank you right now for everybody on here today. God, connecting with true sisters who love them, true sisters who want to see them win, true sisters who don't want anything from them that want to only give to them, God, and to be a support. And those of us that's been hurt so many times, Lord, sometimes it's hard for us to believe that somebody just wants to be a blessing to us, that somebody just wants to love on us and don't want anything from us, not jealous from us, God, not jealous of us or don't want to speak ill or praying, P-R-E-Y, praying against them, but lifting them up, lifting them up and got the pom-poms on to see them win. We thank God for Lady Garrett this morning. Paula, I love you. I thank God for you. And you already know what I said. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Marriage. Y'all young people that's been holding on and been married, don't think y'all got to wait till y'all 60 to, to tell somebody how a marriage works or to speak life into somebody else. Let them know what marriage is all about. Don't wait. If God allows you to get married young and you holding on, don't wait. That's the thing. We want to wait till we get a certain age. Uh-uh. Let's go. Let's go. Let God make you over. Let God heal you. Let God deliver you. Let God show you what to say. 
and he will do it and people will be blessed by you and the very ones on here going they don't want to hear from me oh those are the ones they do that's the enemy job and why are we gonna get mad with the enemy for doing his job every time he tell you they don't want to hear you that really means oh uh, it's time for you to talk start with one Start with one. Ask God. God, I tell you this. Now, God, is there somebody you want me to talk to today? And I'm going to give you this nugget before I get off of here. Because y'all know I love the Lord and I can talk about him all day long. Sometimes when you find yourself going into a depression or you're going into the, to the place where you're in doubt or even just a negative headspace, you know what I do? I grab my phone and I get my messenger or my texts. Okay, God, who you want me to speak to this morning? God, who you want me to empower? Because I don't have time for no pity party. God, I don't have time to be thinking about myself and what I don't have and what I need and what I should have and what I could have. See, you got to stop that thinking right when it comes. Yes, sir. Get that phone out. God, on my job, go through, walk through your job. God, is anybody in here you want me to speak to? Because I don't have time to do the things that kept me bound. I'm going to do something proactive for my mind, for my body, and my spirit. And he will give you somebody. And that very person will be like, I needed that right here, today, and right now. I love you all. God bless you. I'm excited. We're in the driveway. And, um... I'm not going to play my music because something happened. But um, I just want y'all to know to be still and know that God has you. But be still so that you can know what he wants you to do. And that you can see, you can see how he's blessing in small ways. Those things blow my mind. Yesterday I was sitting down with my daughter and I had something to happen. It kind of put me in a little emotional state. And I said, you know, God, you know. I, I know you're with me. I know that you love me. I know that you got me. But if you want to do what you do and just drop a little nuggets and remind me that you got this situation, you know you can. But you don't have to now. But you can if you want to in Jesus' name. It wasn't, I don't even know if it was five minutes later that somebody came with, a, with something that reminded me that he has us. Talk to him like that. Sometimes your child or you as a mother, if your mother's still alive, sometimes you might still just need a hug from your mom. Talk to the Lord like that or your dad. Talk to the Lord like that. Lord, I just need to, I need a hug from you today. He'll do it. And he, sometimes he'll even send a human to represent him, to show you some extra love. It don't take nothing for my five-year-old to run in the room and just hug me and when I'm a, I'm a basket case and it just lifts my spirit. I love you all. God bless you. Be encouraged. But most of all, allow the God of all of this beautiful creation to make you whole. Remember, we're in the driveway. We do it on Mondays. But yesterday was my sister's birthday, and she spent the weekend with me. And I don't get to see her that often. So I say, you know what, God? We'll do it on Tuesday morning. I got to say this. Today is prayer. Tonight, if you have a prayer request, you can put it on the post that I'll have, or you can send me a message. But don't wait till Tuesday. If you need somebody to simply agree with you in prayer, I am your, like they say, I am your girl. I love to pray for somebody else. I was one of the most selfish human beings that was ever walked on the face of the earth. And I know many people on here can vouch for that. But now I love to lift others. I love to pray. I love to just be excited for other people and not spend so much time worrying about me and what I need. I am not an opera singer. Me, 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 me. God bless you. Have an awesome day.